This channel is supported by my online fishing courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner, as well as my books, including my latest book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Yeah, good morning from chilly southwest Florida. You see how I'm dressed? Why, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's just really been cold. Um, that's okay, I'm, I'm catching fish. I'm gonna start with sheep's head, gonna move on to snook trout, redfish, whatever. It, uh, it's, been, it's been good, I've been managing to find fish, so hopefully I can keep that going today. Okay, I finally have fiddler crabs. You know, I've been, uh, any of the sheep's head videos that you've seen from me, I'm always using mud crabs. I've got to harvest those myself from underneath oyster clumps and stuff, and it's a pain. Um, you know, they're not easy to get, and you don't get a ton of them. So to just hand the tackle guy little green pieces of paper and have him give me dozens of uh, crabs was a wonderful thing. Um, however, it is the first time I'm ever going to fish with fiddler crabs. So, um, yeah, hey, my first complication, I got a dolphin head in my way, so I got to deal with that. I'm going to deal with it by just hunkering down, not making a sound. These guys, they like me, they're gonna come over. If I start fishing, it won't leave. I'm just gonna be quiet. Hopefully it's gonna swim away. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, you're gonna be able to see the boils here. You know, it's, it's gonna <laughs> go right, there it is, it's right there. Um, I can't give it any reason to hang around. If I just sit still, um, you know, I, I believe it's just going to move on. If I start fishing, I know 100% it's going to be like trying to grab fish off my jigs and things and eating the fish I'm trying to catch. All right, I think the coast is clear. That dolphin is um, swimming away so okay let's, let's fish um all right fiddlers yeah i've not used them before uh i'm looking at them going hmm how many do i put on a hook and i'm gonna put two on the hook just to give it a little bigger offering um i'll quickly learn that is not at all necessary the other thing uh, i am gonna uh well you're gonna see i'm breaking the shells with pliers uh, not necessary you could just you know crack the shell a little bit with your thumb um but yeah, uh, I'll figure it out here. So I've got these uh, eighth ounce, well, I have, yeah, eighth ounce um, jigs, uh, snapper jigs, actually, that uh, my friend Rick got in the keys, and they're going to turn out to be good sheep's head jigs. So, all right, going to put two on there, see what happens. So I, as I'm playing back the narration, I can tell my voice is shot. Um, my regular viewers know that during the winter, I will take short trips up north um, to do seminars at the... Uh, had some fishing shows, and yeah, this is the morning after the Ward Melville show. Um, and then uh, this coming weekend, for people who are watching this pretty soon after it's released, uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th of March, Providence, Rhode Island. I'll be up there if you're up at the New England uh, fishing show. Yeah, stop by the booth. I'll have uh, a table there every day, and uh, I'll be giving seminars. Okay, easy cast in there. Well, a swing and a miss, but yeah, that jig got picked up pretty much immediately. So, oh yeah, this is going to be good. Yeah, judging by how quickly that got picked up, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I throw one crab in there, it, it's going to get grabbed, so I'm going to use one. And you see I'm pinching with pliers, just not necessary. Just a little squeeze of the thumb will be enough to crack that shell. All right, so I'm, I'm well anchored here, and I use like a, I don't know, it's about a 10-pound anchor. Uh, I don't want it budging, and I'm on a short line, so this is good. When a fish tries to pull me towards the dock, uh, I'm not going to budge. This is a really nice setup. I'm enjoying using the kayak for this kind of fishing, being down low, like basically right, uh, right underneath the dock. So 
So this is just like uh, if you're a northern fisherman, this is just like black fishing. You wait through those little bites, you wait for the jig to move. Yeah, and that's happening really quickly. Um, all right, that's a great start. Um, and actually, my northern viewers might recognize that I've <laughs> changed from that red rod that I use for inshore fishing. I've switched over to what I call my blackfish rod. So that's the Dark Matter Skinner Jig and Bounce uh, ML. Yeah, I just feel like yeah, six foot two inches, uh, just the shorter rod, maybe a little better for this. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. Definitely a nice advantage if you can use white or um, a brightly colored line for this so you can see it. I'm gonna let this guy go. Ooh, that's the biggest one. I'm letting you go, buddy. Because I got some in the box, and you're a really big one. Spawner. Be more careful. <laughs> and I've beefed up to a uh, 30 pound braid for this. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, I think I'm thrown into four feet of water. There's hardly any current. Um, you know, it's just gonna give me more power to get those fish away from the pilings.
Yeah, you see, I, I changed jigs. Well, I damaged the hook point on uh, on that first little green jig, so I've got this pink one on there. Uh, yeah, it's also called a you know, it's a snapper jig. Seems to work okay. Uh, I like the other jig better, but this is uh, this is all right. Also, uh, eighth of an ounce. Hey, great fishing on the fiddlers there. Um, the one thing I noticed, though, I, I edited them out, but in total, all right, I had seven keepers. I didn't keep them all. I threw back a couple. Uh, six shorts. Um, I rarely get shorts on the mud crabs. So that was one difference that I saw was uh, more smaller ones. But, hey, no complaints. I will never, ever pick another mud crab if I can buy fiddlers. So, all right, hey, moved on. Going to go for other fish. And, of course, that first cast goes, you know, catches that mangrove you, you gotta on the first cast uh, i just gotta discipline myself to do it you know shorten it up really try to feel the wind out better yeah well, all right i got lucky i got it out of there so uh, i'll correct on the next cast and the other cast after that guys will eat when it's colder. Yeah, small redfish right away, then it was a loser. Um, so moved along this bank here. Got a little bit of channel water. So you got a couple feet of water up against that bank. And it, since it's outgoing, it's a little bit warmer. So I'm going to work that. It's hard to get underneath between these overhangs sometimes. Uh, if you can just skip it in, that works well. All right, let's watch a few from the higher angle. You'll, you'll in many cases, at least be able to see the, uh, the reel. So uh, you exactly see the presentation there. Not much of a presentation there. It's all, that one was all in the cast. You know, put it right on them, right up against the bank. Uh, barely made a crank. And yeah, they're just small, though. It's, it's good action, and you never know what the next one's going to be.
Yeah, looking back on the shallows, looking for those uh, those snook back there. Um, oh, I love this kayak. I haven't used my skiff since I got this thing. Uh, you know, the speed is great, gives me more range. You can see, you know, I can use it as a stand-up paddle board. Uh, go really skinny. Um, you know, the pedaling, is, I really like the forward-backward, very seamless transition there. Just, I don't know what to say, man. It's just, it's great. So, yeah, this is the Old Town um, uh, Big Water EPDL. Look at these big snook over here. All right, you'll see one very clearly coming out um, on that sand patch in front of the kayak, just off to the right. They're cold and just not eaten. There's like f a whole bunch of them in there. They just have no interest. None at all. Okay, I've moved more than a mile now. This is basically, there's um, some backwaters. This is the entrance to those backwaters. The tide's up a little higher now. Okay, with the tide rising, I've moved uh, more out into the open waters. Hey, uh, something I need to do more often, I'm always throwing at the mangroves, I've got to throw out occasionally. Um, I don't do that probably as much as I should. The outside was, other than that one small red, it was a total zero. I've moved way up into backwaters I've never even fished before. It's a cool thing about this area. There's a lot of uh, different little environments. Um, so, yeah, way up in the back. This is probably the warmest <coughs> water that I'll encounter this trip. back here, huh? Staying warm. Never fished back here before. Okay, and that was the last fish that I caught uh, way inside in the backwaters. You know, hey, the, the sheep's head fishing was great. 
Um, everything else it was very good action, but just wasn't picking size. So, all right, I hope you like this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. Don't forget my books, including my latest book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surfboat and Kayak. You can learn more at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.